so after spending over a month traveling across some of the most beautiful beaches in all of Thailand and three days in Malaysia in Kuala Lumpur, I finally made it to Singapore. Singapore is a city-state located at the very southern tip of Malaysia. City-state meaning that it is both a country and a city. It is one of the most wealthy financial districts in all of Southeast Asia and is also one of the more expensive destinations in this part of the world, which is why I'm trying to do today as cheap as possible. Pretty much every single large city you'll ever visit, the easiest way and the cheapest way to travel to and from places is through the subway line. And Singapore subway line is no exception. It was about $3 round trip. Basically $3 round trip to get from my hostel to where I need to go, which is Marina Bay Sands, which is where I'm heading now. Now, the thing about Singapore that is really interesting is that they probably have the cleanest set of subway systems I've ever seen in my life. Cleaner than New York, cleaner than Subway, cleaner than Barcelona, and definitely cleaner than Paris. Now, oftentimes Singapore is regarded as one of the cleanest, if not the cleanest city in the world, and that's easy to understand as some of the laws here can actually be pretty strict in terms of littering or creating a mess. For example, on the train, there's up to a $500 fine for eating or drinking on the subway, or it is illegal to spit on the ground here. So yes, these laws are pretty intense, but that does mean that you come to one of the most pristine urban areas in the entire world. And that's something you notice as soon as you come. Now one of the most famous things about Singapore is the amount of malls that they have here. And some of the malls are some of the largest and most expensive and glamorous in all of Asia, especially Southeast Asia. Every sort of corner you walk on, every sort of block that you turn, you end up finding the top brands in whatever industry you can possibly find across the world. And areas like this are no exception. Singapore is a much, much more wealthy place than pretty much anywhere I have traveled to in this part of the world. Like pretty much every city I go to, I always recommend go to the highest point that you can possibly find at a reasonable price. Now this cost me about $20 to get the, to the top of Marina Bay Sands Hotel here. Unfortunately, I cannot go into where the infinity pool is and the resort area as that is for hotel guests only and your boy is on a budget, so I can't afford that. Unfortunately, again, like this trip, I keep breaking everything, so my microphone. This thing is broken, and now I have to go replace it and fix it as super glue just isn't working as well as I hoped. Ugh. So I had to bite, bite the wallet and get a new mic. About $100, same mic as before, except it's not broken. So these are the first clips coming off the new mic, same dead cat on top, but now back to the Marina Bay Sands and going to the gardens now, seeing if we can check out what's there, get some cool photos. I'd love to get some hyperlapses in Singapore if possible. Keep filming, keep exploring, and just having a good time. Basically, the reason I ended up coming to Singapore was similar to Kuala Lumpur. Had no intention of being here whatsoever, but I don't have to fix a drone, and I didn't come here specifically to change my mic. I ended up here because I have a 22-hour layover on my way to the Philippines. I head to Cebu tomorrow. So I figured today would be the perfect opportunity to come out and explore one of the cleanest and most beautiful cities in the world, and one of the most modern ones as well. If you're in Singapore for just a day, like you have a layover like this, stick to the marina area because this is pretty much where everything's happening. So of all the days I could have been in Singapore, I ended up being here on the same day as the National Day Parade, which is going on right here at the Youth Olympic Park. So a bunch of Singapore people just singing about Singapore. This is pretty cool. Now one thing I've realized, especially recently, is that I'm an extraordinarily lucky human being with luck that runs in both directions. So for example, I didn't know I was coming to Kuala Lumpur last week. I ended up going, had the time of my life, got a free Gary Vaynerchuk ticket just because I was lucky. 
But the bad luck side of it is I only went because my drone wasn't working and then while I was there I had another piece of equipment that failed. Then I end up coming here because I have a layover. I wasn't expecting to come to Singapore. Happens to be the National Day Parade, which is ridiculous. And then I see people falling out of the sky, landing in the water as part of the show. Could not have expected that any other way. But at the same time, my mic broke. So then there's the two sides of my luck. It gets really, really good, and then it gets really bad, and it keeps cycling back and forth. Now, one of the coolest things about this city that I think I've realized, like, very recently, is that despite it being extremely modern, extremely wealthy, extremely fun, and kind of something for a lot of tourists to do, especially in this area, in the Marina Bay area, it doesn't feel Americanized. And I think that's what really makes Singapore a treat, is that it still feels like you're in Asia. It doesn't feel like I'm in just an Asian North America. And that's what I think really attracts to the vibe, is you still feel like you're on the other side of the world. While you see a few familiar things, like maybe the occasional Starbucks, but this is one of the coolest places I've seen. Going back to my theme of luck. Today is July 21st, and July 21st until August 3rd happens to be the Singapore Gardens Festival here. So today is the first day of the festival where this entire area is full of the most beautiful smelling flowers, the most beautiful looking flowers, and this is one of the coolest places I've seen. I've said that twice already. But Singapore is it's a nice place to have at least a one to two day stop. A little pricey though, but it's still good. I like it. So I made it to the gardens here in Singapore. It's almost like being an avatar. It's just ridiculous. Now about 40 minutes we've got the light show happening, which is free, so it's a free activity you can do here in Singapore. But I'm heading up to the balcony and to the bridges, which is gonna be about an hour, unfortunately, and hopefully I can see the, see the city lit up at night. This is really special. So I made it to the very top, right here on the bridge, at the very end of the light show and got to see it completely mesmerized. It was beautiful, it was incredible, it was fantastic. And I can feel this whole bridge swaying, so if you're afraid of heights, definitely not for you. But look at Singapore, just at night, just beautiful. Singapore has proven to be one of the coolest cities I've ever visited. An amazing place to have a layover for about 22 hours and to spend an afternoon and an evening. I've loved it here so far. I've only stayed to one part of the city. I wouldn't recommend coming here for any longer than three to four days if you're on a budget like I am because it will eat you up, but it is so worth it. I encourage everybody to check it out. This is the end of today, so peace and goodbye.